Hey everybody, I'm Cisco. This is my Marantz PM7000N. I was very surprised there are no videos talking about this amazing product. So I decided to make this video, which shows unboxing all the way to daily use of it with the Heos app. First, the short summary. You know, since a lot of people don't want to watch the entire video, let me go ahead and tell you. So this is a 60 watts times two channels, or 80 watts into four ohms. So it's got plenty of power for mid-sized rooms. Um, my office is uh, 12 foot by 10 foot, and I never need to go above 30 out of the 100 volume range. So it's got plenty of juice has three RCA inputs, plus a tape loop, plus a turntable input for you vinyl lovers. Uh, has two opticals, one digital coax, has a USB, a LAN port, and of course has two gig, five gig Wi-Fi built in and Bluetooth built in. Um, docks are pretty good. Um, I have very nice rich sound in all of the digital streaming, Bluetooth, uh, and of course the CD and MP3s that are connected to it. So it pretty much covers anything you might want to connect in one single box, which is quite slick. Uh, this product is, also has internet radio, which is a bit more rare to find than you would think. Uh, it has TuneIn and it also has iHeartRadio. Both of those are fantastic and free. I said free streaming music radio systems it's quite nice um, this product also contains Heos which is the Denon Marantz platform for this streaming services uh, I don't know it's like an organizing app it's very very slick I like it um, I'll explain that a little bit more in this video but for those who like Tidal, Pandora, Spotify, Amazon Music you're gonna love this product Okay, I looked for a long time with a goal of trying to find a single box uh, solution that had digital inputs, streaming radio, and I can confidently say that this is about the best you can do for a $1,000. Um, of course, you know, there's others out there, but uh, I really, really like this product. So I hope you like this video so far. Uh, like I said, stick around. I'm going to unbox it. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about what I think of the sound. I want to explain how I use some of the Heos app because believe it or not there's not a lot of videos out there that actually show you how to step by step through that thing. I think you might find it useful. And uh, like I said, uh, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video so far or wait till the end and then give me a thumbs up. Uh, post your comments below and you can even subscribe to my channel. Nothing fancy but I do a lot of cool stuff. I do cooking and I do home improvements, and of course I do audio things. All right, let's get started. Okay, abracadabra. I don't spend 15 minutes opening a box. I think that's a waste of time. So, I already opened the box. box is nicely padded, it's really thick. Uh, so my Marantz traveled with no problem, very healthy. Uh, I live in the Dallas area, so halfway across the country. Of course, it comes with a detachable AC cord. It's a nice thick one, too. Uh, it's pretty thick. I mean, you can always upgrade it if you want to, but it's pretty nice. It's got the two uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth antennas. It's got a nice remote control. Of course, it's got your manual. And it has this little extra Spotify premium thing, so I guess they try to get you... See if you want to, you know, participate in that and pay for that. And, of course, all the other paperwork for warranty information and such. This thing is heavy. I mean, you feel like you're getting something here. You can kind of see all the stuff through the top layer there, which is nice ventilated. So it's got your heat sinks in the middle there. That's probably where I'm going to set my super quiet fan just to help circulate some of the air. Get a load of these. 
binding speaker posts. I mean, they are huge. I mean, they must be like two inches thick or something. Huge. Um, so it's got all your standard connections, of course. It's got two opticals, one coax digital, a USB, LAN port. It's got your phono for all you phono guys who need it badly. Um, three more audio ends, recorder, loop, subwoofer out. And it's got a remote control thing. So I guess that's their link system for if you want to control other Marantz components or something like that. Like I said, seriously heavy, uh, which is nice. You feel like you're getting something. Uh, it's well packed in there. Hopefully this thing doesn't have any overheating issues. Like I said, I'm going to have a fan on the top of mine to, just to get some air movement instead of my rack. But so far, so good. Okay, got it all wired up. Um, you guys should already know this, but you always make sure you plug in your speaker cables, data, audio, video, digital, everything without the receiver plugged in. You know, it's always good practice. Uh, so once I did that, I went ahead and plugged it in. So you see I have my three digital connections here. I have uh, two opticals. Uh, one is my CD player. The other one is my uh, HD tuner. And then I have a coax for my... Uh, DVD player, which I use for DVD audio. Uh, I got a little USB drive then there for 32 gig worth of MP3 music that I've ripped at uh, 320 kbps. Now, some of them are variable bit rate, but most of them are 320 kbps. Uh, there's my uh, speaker wires. This is kind of cool. So this thing here, what you do is it, it's you loosen it. You put in the banana jack and then you tighten it down and it it clamps down on that banana jack. It's quite nice. So a pretty secure connection. I like it. And of course my power supply, you can see the Wi-Fi antennas there. Even though I have a LAN connection, I went ahead and you still need those for Bluetooth, just in case I use the Bluetooth. Okay, I'm gonna break it in. Okay, so I turn it on and uh, you select your language of course. And then after you select your language, uh it asks you to update the soft firmware software. Again, remember, I have the LAN connection plugged into the back. Other than that, it would actually ask you to log into the Wi-Fi. But since I use hardwire in the back, it uh, automatically connected to Marantz, and it started downloading the software. Of course, you got to say yes, but that's pretty cool. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, the build quality on this is solid. Um, I wasn't going to take the case off of this thing. I'm sure there's other videos if you want to see the case ripped off. But it's it's got a lot of equipment uh, packed in there. Uh, they did put the heat sink in a nice location so that it... Uh, and it's a heat sink. There's no fan. I don't like fans. Uh, they, they make noise and they break down. So this thing has a nice big fat heat sink too. Uh, remove the heat. Uh, I have a nice amount of air between the I guess the top of my cabinet and my receiver so I don't have any issues. It sounds um, the sound is fairly neutral. Uh, as a matter of fact I would say very neutral. Uh, it's got a nice just a touch of warmness in normal mode. Dynamics is good. It's it's very good. I mean there's better but this is very good. It sounds as relaxing or polite, as many people say. Um, has a bass knob, as you can see. And I think it's set at 50 hertz. It gives you plus or minus 10. So each one of those little notches is, I think, 2 dB. And it has a treble, which I think is centered at 15 kilohertz. Uh, so it's probably a tad higher than most people, but I guess it's for people who want to hear breaking glass type of thing. Uh, you, you can, uh, you know, tweak them however you wish. Uh, but... What I really like, and let me go ahead and turn the button on and off so you can see it. It has a source direct button. See that? I just turned it off. And now I'm going to turn it back on again. So that source direct uh, is quite nice. Uh, what it does is it seems to tighten up the music. Uh, so there's more snap in the bass. Uh, the vocals sound more live and high frequencies have more sparkle. Um, so... It, I don't know if it really, you know, I don't think it raises the volume. It just tightens them up. Uh, it's harder to, 
I guess maybe the dampening factor kicks in a little bit more. But uh, it sounds really, really good. It almost gives it a kind of a holographic sound stage. It's very, very nice. Um, and, you know, I'll talk more about the magic button a little bit later. But it, it's quite nice, you know, that when you turn on the Source Direct, you still get the display. There's a lot of the... Um, other you know products out there that when you go to the source direct or the direct mode it turns everything off i mean you can't even tell if the unit's on sometimes so i, I kind of really really like that the fact that you know you can still see the display now uh you can turn the display off i haven't messed with that but you can do that here's another neat little feature this thing does so as you can see i have my hd tuner and i have my cd player which uh, teak cd player which i also use as an ipod dock highly recommend it but i'm gonna show you something really cool so if i turn on my cd player you see that it goes up to optical one so it detects the signal and it automatically changes the input so that's really slick uh, and it'll also do that if you activate your bluetooth or if you activate uh, the hd tuner or if I activate an app that's on the HEOS, it'll automatically switch to that input. So that's quite slick. Okay, so you can go to Google Play Store or if you have an Apple device, I'm sure you can find it on Apple. So you look for HEOS. And there it is right there. It's got that funky little symbol. Uh, and you install it. It is a free app. It's really, really slick. Um, it works great. Of course, you'll have to create an account. And, uh, you know, you have an email. And your email and your password, you'll have to enter onto the uh, Marantz. So uh, use an email that's easy to type in. And use a password that's easy to type in. Make sure you save them somewhere. Uh, while you're at it, you might as well go out there and make um, a registration for TuneIn, make a registration for iHeartMusic, one for Spotify, and of course if you have Amazon, uh, you'll want to get your Amazon stuff too. So it's really, really slick. Once you get it installed there, you know, you say allow access, you say allow, and then it's boom, it already found it. So that's my... Uh, receiver right there. So I, I labeled it Office. You can call it whatever you want. So after you install the HEOS on your old uh, Android or the Android phone you're currently using, and also for Apple, you can actually use this as a remote control. Check it out. See? So um, once you have your HEOS software installed, then you can go into your music, all kinds of stuff. It asks you to rate the app. Uh, remind me later. It has all of these uh, streaming services and stuff you can use. Uh, you can actually control the. So you can see here it has Pandora, TuneIn. It's got you know Spotify. It's got your Amazon Music and all that stuff. So it's really slick. Um, here you go. So I can actually go to TuneIn and you can actually go find stuff. So you can, if you want to find a sports station, you can find it right. Or uh, Let's say you, you know a local radio station that you like. It pulls up all your local radio stations. And this is all free, so it's really, really slick. I really like it because I can actually listen to radio stations from towns that I used to live in, like Seattle and, and uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and Philadelphia and stuff like that. So I, I really dig it. Um, okay, uh, another thing is, of course, there is iHeartRadio, which is another free one. And, and they also have a whole bunch of radio stations too. I have a bunch of my favorites, of course. Well, they're not saved on this machine yet. But there's a whole bunch of them. And you can, again, search for them however you want. One of the really cool things is, after you find a radio station you like, let's go ahead and find one, just for an example. So go to Tune In. I'm going to go to Buy Music. There we go. And let's say, what do I want to listen to? How about Decades Music? There we go. Uh, let's go to, there's a German radio station. Okay, 
So you can actually see that you can go here, play now, more, or add to Heo's favorites. So I can just add it to the Heo's favorites. Okay, so now it's been added. So we'll go back. And you'll see here, with some of the other features you got, you have your playlist, of course, and you have this phone and all of that. But right here, you have favorites. So this thing can store up to 200 of your favorite radio stations. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, you just kind of go through there and load them up as you want. You can always delete them if you need to. So it's really cool. Uh, it's a lot easier to access with this thing than it is to do it on the actual unit itself. If you're doing the actual unit itself, you got to grab the remote control and you got to hold it down or keep going down or keep going up. You know, it's a little bit tricky if you're trying to get to that 99th radio station, right? You got to hold the button down for a long time. But here, you just kind of just boom down and boom, 103 or something like that. You know, it's really really cool. All right. And I'm going to put down some of the my favorite radio stations at the bottom of this, uh, you know, the comments. And if you guys want to put your favorite radio stations, uh, whether it's jazz, easy listening, 80s music, you name it, uh, you know, it'd be fun to talk about. Of course, Heos um, will support some of your pay subscriptions for some of you guys who love uh, spending money on Tidal or Pandora. Um, you know, nothing against it. I just, you know, me personally, I have a lot of uh, high quality CDs and have spent uh, a good amount of time ripping my MP3. So I'm quite proud of the, the library that I've created. And speaking of library, um, there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can store music on the phone itself. Let's say you're, you just want to do that. So if you want to use your primary telephone... Uh, and you use an app like iSyncer. If you guys don't know what that is, I'll put a link in there. It is awesome. It basically turns your Android phone into an Apple Music phone. So you can connect your Android telephone to your iTunes and it'll upload all your playlists from your iTunes. It's quite slick. Uh, so you can do that and then store the music on the phone or you can do what I did and you go get a SD memory card or a USB stick and stick it on the back of this receiver and fill it up. So I'm going to show you how I do that. You go here, USB music. Okay, there it is, office. I can browse the folders, artists, however you want to do it. So what I do is I create a folder and in each of these folders I just pick up and drop all of my favorite songs that are on the playlist for iTunes. So it's really simple. You select them, control C, and then you open up a, your file explorer and drop them. And bam, there they are. So I have them all here. So you can just go ahead and start playing all tracks if you want to. You can, you know, whether you want to play them now in the queue, whatever. So I just say play now, boom. So now it's starting playback. And, uh, so it's going to show that there. And sometimes if the album art is nearby, it'll also load up the album art. So it's really, really cool. I really dig that. So you're going to love it. It's an easy way to, to load all of your MP3s on there. Um, now, me personally, I tend to rip my stuff at 256 kbps. And I have had fantastic sound quality with that. So, I mean, you can use more. I just didn't feel like going and ripping 13,000 songs again at 320 kbps. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm fine with the 256. But, of course, new music, I go ahead and stream it at a higher bit rate. So this product does have Alexa. So if you have uh, these speakers that are, could be wired to this unit in your patio or something and you have your phone with you and it's connected to Alexa you can tell Alexa to turn office off and she'll do that now you'll see mine didn't turn off because I actually don't have um, an Alexa speaker inside of my office because I don't want it I don't want to be turning my thing on and off accidentally but if you really dig doing that kind of stuff you're going to enjoy this um, 
This product is super easy to live with. I've enjoyed it. I mean, I really wish more hi-fi manufacturers would embrace the whole digital thing. And I think they're starting to. I think they're starting to realize that. That's why you're seeing some high-end uh, stuff from Name and and uh, Nad and, you know, of course, Denon and, and Marantz are doing it. You're seeing a lot of guys are starting to make these high-quality st digital streaming platforms for their, their hi-fi stuff. So I really dig it. I think it's coming. But I love this single box uh, design. You know, it has uh, the ability to have one single unit. I don't have to worry about digital inputs. You know, I don't have to worry about extra fiber cables or coax cables. Uh, it, you know, it, it makes sure that there's the best possible transfer of data since it's all inside of one box and they've tested it uh, thoroughly in their production process. My humble home, my humble office. Here's my Bowers and Wilkins 601 S2 speakers. Uh, they're about 10 feet apart. There's my desk where I normally sit and do my work. And there's my Marantz PM7000N. I also have a Sanjian HD tuner, as well as a Teak CD P650N. Uh, CD player, which also acts as an iPod dock. Um, I'll review those on a separate video, but uh, both of those devices are absolutely outstanding. So pairing. Um, I actually tried this out with three different sets of speakers. Of course, my Monitor Audio Silver 100s, uh, brand new. I just got them. Uh, before that, I had some Bowers & Wilkins 601 S2s which were really, really good. Uh, they just were just missing a little bit of bass, and they were about 15 years old, so I finally had to part with them. Plus, uh, the, you know, you can see my new office is all black. They were a light oak, so they didn't quite fit the decor, which my wife didn't like. All right, so uh, the, these uh, monitor audios, and I'll review them in some other uh, video. They sound really, really good, too. Now, the... Um, the mid-range and the high frequencies is a bit more neutral than my B&Ws, um, but these things have some massive bass. I mean, and I don't really have any space in my uh, office for a subwoofer, so I really, really enjoy the bass I get out of these bad boys. Okay, so back to the Marantz receiver. Um, I also paired them up with a set of my ELAC. 6.2 debut S2s. I actually moved those over to the uh, TV room and it paired up with that was really really well. They're like super neutral on super neutral. So some people might find it boring but uh, for people who like uh, accuracy I think you'll really enjoy it. Of course uh, you can always upgrade to the ELAC uh, reference series which I think are supposed to be a bargain for 500 bucks ish or something like that. Um, all right. Competition. So before I had this, I actually had a NAD C340 receiver, which died after about 12 years or something like that. Uh, it was warm sounding with amazing dynamics. Um, of course, it was old school, had no digital inputs whatsoever. Uh, and it was missing some of the details in high frequency sparkle. I mean, nothing bad about it. It's just, you know, it had no digital input. So it was missing some of that, uh, I don't know, digitized sound. Some guys like it, some guys don't. Um, so if you want to save some cash, you know, on competition for the Marantz, like I said, for $1,000, I think you can't go wrong. But let's say you, you want to save a few bucks. Uh, you can actually get a similar product, which is the Denon CEOL RCD-N10. They're running around 500 bucks right now. Uh, and of course, there is uh, also the sister to this Marantz, which is the MCR612. And those are running around $700, so you save yourself 300 bucks. Those are kind of cool because they both have built-in CD players. They still have the Heos, they still have a couple of uh, digital inputs each, 
They still got a USB port on the back and st streaming connectivity and all that stuff. So they're maybe the amp is just not maybe as good or as hefty or as rich as the one on this Marantz PM7000N. But they're pretty good too. Uh, I have to admit, I like them. Now the probably the most likely competitor to this, is, you know, right now is that Cambridge CXA61. I also tried it. And you can't go wrong with either. Uh, I'm not going to bash one, okay? It, and there's certainly a lot of amplifiers under the 1000 that you can pair up with a, a network streaming. But Cambridge is really good. It was probably a touch more dynamic um, and maybe a slight bit more neutral. But it was, to me, it was missing a little bit of... Um, it sounded hollow, in the mid range and the upper mid range, so so even though it was more dynamic, it sounded more hollow, which is is strange. I, I'm not sure how that happened, but it just and if you if you try it, you'll see what I'm talking about. You raise the volume and you keep raising it and raising it and raising. It. It's like when is this going to satisfy my ears? You know, it had that kind of sound to it. Now it wasn't horrible, don't get me wrong, but uh, but it it just didn't have the the richness that this Marantz has. Uh, the other thing I didn't like about the Cambridge is, uh, and a couple things that really annoyed me, it, it didn't have very many buttons on the front of the unit. So there was no bass, there was no treble, but worst of all, it didn't have that magic direct button, you know. I really wish you would have had that, and, you know, because that's what you really need to kind of make it more engaging. Now, the deal breaker was the app. Uh, the Heos app is really, really good. It's well-polished. Uh, they've worked out a lot of the kinks. The Cambridge has uh, this, you know, Cambridge Stream Magic app. And I think they had another one before that. And that, that Stream Magic app is just nowhere near as good. It, 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 it's buggy and it didn't work right. I didn't like it. I just didn't, didn't see myself living with this thing, you know, day in and day out. Like I said, uh, you can always uh, go with a... A pair of devices. Let's say you want to go an amp and then a streaming box, right? The most logical choice, of course, is uh, somebody who wants to stay in the this Denon Marantz family. You can go with a Denon DNP 800 network player and the Denon PMA 600 NE or the 800 NE uh, amplifier. You know, they run around 400 or 600 bucks. So you can pretty much build a thousand dollar. That's the same thing as this. One box, thousand dollar. I'm not sure how that saves anything. Um, of course, you can always go with the Blue Blue Sound Node 2i, which is a really good music streamer, and pair that up with your favorite amp, and away you go. Uh, for me, that didn't work because uh, not only did you know I would essentially need three inputs, right? Because I would have I have my HD tuner, my CD player, and then I would need a third uh, digital input for my my uh, uh, network player. Complaints. Okay, this is a near perfect product, but of course, we got to keep manufacturers on their toes, right? Top of their game. So, uh, here are my complaints. One of the things that really bothers me is the fact that you'll see here, I have all the stuff and I have my inputs here. You'll see one of the things missing here is Bluetooth. So if I want to use Bluetooth, like for example, I actually have a radio station in my hometown of El Paso, Texas, who is not on iHeartRadio and is not on TuneIn. So I actually have to go to their website and I have to download their app to listen to the music. So I do this. Yeah. So uh, here I am listening to the music. Let me lower the volume. The way I, the only way I can actually get this to play is I have to deactivate and reactivate my Bluetooth. When I reactivate the Bluetooth, it's going to pull up the device, which is Office. And then once it does that, you might hear it click. The receiver will switch to the Bluetooth. Of course, you can always just go ahead and push the Bluetooth button on the top of the remote control. But it would have been slick if the app could do that too, right? So once you do that, 
course, it shows the album art there, and it shows a song playing. And it'll also show it on the receiver itself. So that's really cool. I really wish they would do that. They would make it a little easier. Or ba like I said, basically, all they got to do is is add a Bluetooth option to this page here. I don't know why it's not there. Another thing I really wish they would do, and you know, on the unit and maybe here, I wish they would let you rename these things, and they don't. I mean, I sit here and I try to, you know, it's just it's going to select it now. But I really wish it would let me rename it because my CD player is actually connected to my Optical One. So I really wish it would have let me call it Optical One CD Teak Player or something like that. Or my Optical In 2 would have let me rename it to my HD Tuner. You know, it doesn't let me do any of that. So I really wish they would fix that. That's, that's a couple of those things that I have that I, I really wish they would. I hope they, they're listening to this or they'll listen to my video and... They'll try to make an effort to make it a little bit better. Another thing I wish, I wish there was a way to add some of the buttons. You know, you'll notice there's no mute here. I mean, yeah, you can hold your volume down till it mutes everything, but I wish there was a mute button. I wish there was a source direct button. You know, maybe some of the other ones that they're not here. Or maybe if you had the choice to program some of these things in, I really wish that would be there. Okay. So again, thanks for sticking around with me. I hope you enjoyed this video of my Marantz PM7000N. I do think it's a great buy, especially if you're looking for a one-box solution in an office or some bedroom or something like that. Um, I really like it. I hope you like it. And if you enjoyed my video, please hit like, uh, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like. Okay, enjoy, have a good day, stay healthy.